Hey everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Windows Movie Maker 6 and Windows 7. Windows Movie Maker 6 is the version of Movie Maker that was included with Windows Vista. In my opinion, it's the best version of Movie Maker that Microsoft has ever released. It has a lot of good features in it, and it has all the good advanced stuff that video editors like to use. And most of you say, well, why don't you just get Windows Live Movie Maker? Well, here's the thing about Windows Live Movie Maker. It's good for average Joes who are just, who are just wanting to slap stuff together. Microsoft did a favor to those, which is a good thing. They did, they did, they did the average Joes a favor by creating a simple piece of software, but they didn't do the advanced editors a favor by keeping Movie Maker 6 alive by releasing it into Windows 7. Or creating a newer version of it. Which, in my opinion, I don't like any of the Windows Live software. It's junk. The photo gallery, the only thing I like about it is you can straighten photos. Otherwise, it is slow compared to the Windows Photo Gallery that's in Windows Vista. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up Windows Movie Maker 6 and Windows 7. First, I'll go ahead and show you my particular setup. This is Windows 7 Professional. And what I did when I set up Movie Maker into Windows 7 is I created, I renamed all the files instead of saying Windows Movie Maker, I called it Movie Maker Vista Edition. You don't have to do this, but this is something I did just for the heck of it. What I did was when I migrated from Windows Vista to Windows 7 is I copied all the files, the program files anyway, Windows Vista program, see the folder. I had the Movie Maker, Vista Games, Vista Calendar, Vista Journal, Vista Mail, Vista Photo Gallery, Vista Sidebar. The Sidebar works. The Journal, I'm not sure if it works or not. Actually, the Journal doesn't work. The, pho the Photo Gallery, I can't get it to work for some reason. The Calendar, I haven't tried. The Games, I haven't tried. The, the Movie Maker works fine. But the thing is, when you set this up, you got to copy this folder into your program files folder which I'll go ahead and go ahead and go over to the program files folder and just get so you can take a look here which by the way that's the 64 bit movie maker from Vista 64 home premium let's see which like I said you don't have to rename your um, files or anything you can leave it as is what I did you got you got to copy this into your program files folder, and do what's called register the DLLs using a command prompt. Which you do if you do not know how to do that, I suggest you don't try because you can mess things up with command prompt. But fortunately for the people who don't want to do that, who just prefer to use the 32-bit version, there is an installer online that really makes it simple. Which they're saying they're going to release a 64-bit version soon. I hope they do. But the 32-bit version, it is really simple to install, which I have a link in the YouTube descri description. It's like installing, let's say, any, about, like any kind of standard program. You click next, and probably accept some terms, and then say next and install. Really simple to set up. Which here is the Movie Maker Six, and it works just fine. The only pro only only thing that won't work is publish a movie to a DVD because the Windows 7 DVD maker does not import MSWMM files. So you have to export the movie as like a file on the computer and then add it into the Windows 7 DVD maker. That's no big deal though. But otherwise everything works fine. Which I'll go ahead and pull up Windows Live Movie Maker just to let you take a look side by side. The only thing I like about the new Live Movie Maker is how they set up to look like, just like Microsoft Office has with the ribbon and everything. Those are the only thing. That's the only thing I like about the Live Movie Maker. Otherwise. <laughs> It's junk. 
Let's say add. Let's try to add a video here and let's just see what it would do. Like this camcorder review. I mean, what's up with this? They basically took this here and then crammed it over here to the side. Which is which I, it's okay how they did the ribbon and everything. It just it would just take me a while to get used to that, but still, I don't like that. I mean, and it's nice how they make make it a bit more simple to upload stuff to YouTube and all that kind of stuff, but it's not really worth it when you are lacking a lot of features and stuff. I'm used to this, which I'm sure a lot of you a lot of you guys are too, having the timeline at the bottom. Having the advanced options for the audio and all that kind of stuff here at the bottom, that kind of stuff. And the Movie Maker Six is so adaptable; you can create your. It's just it's like the XP Movie Maker, the 2.6 or the 2.1. You can add in your own styles of resolutions and all that kind of stuff by adding just dropping files into a program into the shared folder and the program files folder. Which, if you want extra information on how to play around with Movie Maker, adding, adding in the custom resolutions and all that kind of stuff, you can go to what's called PapaJohn.org. They got all sorts of Windows Movie Maker information there. But anyway, just want to show you that it is possible to get the Windows Movie Maker 6 into Windows 7. Which, to Microsoft, all I can tell you is. Moonmaker is a bit more important than what you thought it was, obviously. You need to have something like this, the old classic style, what we're all used to. I mean, you can keep on making the live software for just the simple stuff. I mean, you want to add a few photos in. This is actually, this is actually better for pictures, in my opinion. But you still need to do a favor for the um, advanced video editors like me keep the old style of Moonmaker going around too which if any of you guys have been able to get Windows Photo Gallery to work on Windows 7 let me know and tell me what I need to do and I appreciate it and there y'all have it